Hey YouTube, what's up? Welcome to another Morales tutorial video. Today we are going to give a check to the Get Collections by Wallet endpoint for the Morales API. This endpoint basically gets NFT collections owned by any given wallet address. So for today's demo, we are going to use Django as our Python backend development framework and a frontend made on React. Therefore, we want to accomplish something like this. I have three input fields right here, one for a wallet address, another for the chain, you can select any EVM compatible blockchain and the limit, which is going to determine the amount of collections which are going to be shown on the screen. So if I click on get NFTs, I got all the collections this specific wallet address has for the Ethereum blockchain. So if you want to learn how to accomplish this, keep watching because we are just getting started. If we go back to the APA reference webpage, and use the exact same wallet address for the same network and click try it, we are going to get a similar response, but in JSON format. And Morales was built to make our life as developers really easy because they provide us the exact code we need to get this accomplished. So let's copy this. And I'm going to go back to my code editor, Visual Studio Code, on which I already have prepared a Django project. I just created a new file called services.py. So let's paste this over here and the parameters we need to provide our API key, the address, the chain, the limit, and the cursor. By the way, if you don't have a Morales account yet, this is the part of the video for you to go to morales.io and create a free account. Here on your admin panel, you are going to get your free API key. So let's copy this, go back to our code, paste it here. Let's select the address. I'm going to use the exact same one I had before for the same network. The limit, I'm going to set it up to 10. And what is the cursor? If we check the Python SDK reference, we discover that the cursor is returned on the previous response. Basically, this is used to separate the response in different pages. As we are getting the response directly on the terminal, we don't need to specify the cursor. So let's give it a try. The only thing we need to run this is Morales, so pip install Morales. I already have it, so let's give it a try. Python services.py. And as you can see here, we get the response of all the collection this wallet has. Of course, it's based on the limit because this wallet actually has a lot more of collections. Sadly, this response seems ugly because we are just using the terminal. But we now have an easy connection to our Morales API. So now we are going to take this, use it through the backend and consume it on the front end. A side note here, using your API key into your code is a security risk, especially if you are going to push your code to a repo like GitHub. That's why we are going to take this API key and transform it into an environment variable. Back to the code, there is plenty of ways to transform this into an environment variable. So I'm going to just put this out. And the easiest one for today's tutorial is using a Python library called python.emb. So go back to our terminal, pip install python.emb. I already have it. So back to my code and let's import it. From .emb, import load emb. And also we are going to use another preloaded library called OS. Let's save this and use that function, load.mb, and we are going to replace this API key. So we are going to say os.getenv Morales API key. This Morales API key doesn't exist already. So let's create it. Here on my NFT folder, I'm going to create a new file, .emb, and I'm going to type export Morales API key and I'm going to paste my API key here. Let's save it and everything should still be working. So let's give it a try. Go back to my terminal, pythonservices.py and as you can see, everything is working just fine. So for what's left for this script, I'm just going to convert this into a function which is going to get the address, the chain and the limit as parameters. See you soon. So let's implement this get NFT collection function into Django. So I'm going to back to my views and create a new view. First of all, I'm going to import from services that function, import get NFT collections, and also I'm going to import JSON. So let's create that view. 
dev get collections this is going to receive the requests as you know this is going to receive the chain the result and the limit so let's set it up those variables chain is going to be equal to request get chain address the same and limit exactly the same so let's use that function nft collection is going to be equal to get nft collections and we are going to specify the variables so chain is going to be equal to chain address to address and limit to limit these responses are going to give us a dictionary but sadly react cannot understand python dictionaries so we are going to transform this into a json so json collectibles equal to json.tons nft collections and we are going to just return this return http response and just the json collectibles now as we already have this view we just have to add it to our urls so let's copy this go back to the backend folder urls and add it here as you can see i already have the views imported from the nft application so but get collections view.get collections let's save this and this is almost it for the backend so in the front end all the parameters chain address and limit are stored on this parents variable so let's connect our react application to our django server in order to accomplish that we are going to go to package.json and here i'm going to create a proxy which is going to point to localhost but on the port 8000 which is the default for Django server running locally. So back to app.js, we are going to connect to the server through Axios. So let's go back to our terminal and install Axios. npm install Axios. I already have it. It won't take that much. So let's import it. Import Axios from Axios. So I'm going to create a new function here. Const refresh NFTs which is going to be an async function. Here we're going to use Axios, so await axios.get. And as we already used the proxy to set up the API address, we can just use relative paths. So get collections, question mark, and we are going to send the variables here on params. So the chain is going to be params.chain the same for the address and the same here for the limit if this goes well let's say then take the response and for now i'm just going to console.log that response finally if something goes wrong i'm going to use a catch phrase and to show which the error was so let's save this of course, we want to use this refresh NFTs every time we push that get NFTs button. So let's copy this, go back to the button, replace this anonymous function with that, and let's give it a try. However, before testing this on the front end, we have to take in mind some considerations. This limit variable here is an integer, and Django is going to take it as a string. And also, as we are using these relative paths, we also have to specify this URL on the URLs on the backend. So let's do it quickly. Here on the views, I'm just going to change this into an integer. And on the URLs, I'm going to name these get collections, name collections. Let's save this. And now we are ready to test this out on the front end. Here on the web page, I'm going to use the exact same wallet address for the Ethereum chain. So let's give it a try. And as you can see here, we get the actual JSON response. So here we have the information for all the collection this wallet address has. Of course, based on the limit, we set it up here. The only thing left we have to do is to take this JSON response and show it into the front end as I showed you at the beginning of the video. So let's do it as well. So here, instead of just using this console.log, let's actually use this set NFT collections and take the rest.data, but we want the result. And the reason is because here we have all the NFTs on this result variable. So now just let's create a card to show this app. Back. 
So I'm back and as you can see here, I just mapped all the collections on the JSON response and I'm going to show in the collection name, the collection contract time and the token address. Finally, I'm just going to copy this, render it NFTs, go back here and replace it. So that's it. Let's give it a try again. Let's reload this, copy and paste this. And as you can see, boom, we have the response for all the NFT collections this wallet has. And as I already told you, you can use any EVM compatible blockchain. So for example, let's use another wallet. Copy here. Let's use Binance, for example, get NFTs and boom, you have all the collections. This wallet has only one collection on the Binance smart chain. But as you can see, this was really easy. Just with a small portion of code, we were able to connect to Morales API and now we can get information for any collection, any wallet has on any EVM compatible blockchain. How cool is that? And if you want to reproduce this code on your computer, don't forget to check out the GitHub repo on the description. There you will have the templates for both the backend and the frontend. Also, don't forget to check out Morales YouTube channel. Here you will find more tutorials and Web3 related content. So subscribe and turn on the notification. That was all for today's video. I hope you enjoy it and see you on the next time. Farewell.